So this does seem to be like a hallway, like it seems like a transitional space because you can see that. Oh my god, oh my god, I just had a heart attack. Hello everyone. This is going to be another one of those simple podcast, like just recording my desktop, let's see where it goes type of videos because last week I just did not have a moment of time to myself and I want to do something pretty easy. I was basically busy all last week and every moment of free time was spent just trying to scramble out those two videos. That's uh, the Return of the Living Dead one and the Video Game Easter Eggs one. And I want this is a kind of a video I've wanted to make for a while because once the Source Games video started really blowing up, I started getting hundreds and hundreds of comments from people saying, yeah, it feels that way because it's a liminal space. And I started hearing that term a lot, and it's actually a term that I hadn't heard before. So what I've done is I've googled liminal spaces, just kind of picked one of the first results, and here we are on the Aesthetics Wiki. And I guess I'm just going to read about what a liminal space is, because I think I kind of get the idea. It's something I've looked into a little bit just by seeing, like, example images. And I'm pretty sure I get the idea, but I kind of want it put into words, because I'm not really sure at this point how to actually articulate that. So the aesthetic known as liminal space is a location which is a, which is a transition between two other locations or states of being. Typically they are abandoned and oftentimes empty. A mall at 4 a.m. or a school hallway during summer, for example. This makes it feel frozen and slightly unsettling, but also familiar to our minds. Okay, this is, bas this is basically what I said about source maps. On May 12th, 2019, an anonymous 4chan user asked on the X Paranormal board, yeah, represent, post disquieting images that just feel off. True to its etymology, the concept of a liminal space classically encompasses physical spaces that, due to their function, are transitional. Hallways, waiting rooms, parking lots, and rest stops are the archetypal examples of such places. Liminal space aesthetics relate to the unique and combined feelings of eeriness, nostalgia, and apprehension one gets when presented with such places outside of their designed context. That is very, very interesting to me. That is so interesting to me because I used to get that feeling about my school, you know, like, like, you know, when you have to go back into school for something, like if you forgot something after hours and like, they'll just turn off all the lights down certain hallways that aren't in use. Yeah, I, I really do think I'm starting to get this. And, and, look, it says, uh, unique and combined feelings of eeriness, nostalgia, and apprehension. This is all coming together because if you've seen my Why is Creepy Comfy video, I kind of do draw a link. There is, like, a weird link between comfort and, like, coziness and creepiness. This is really, really cool. All right. Uh, most most notably, their function is inter they function as intermediary points between origin and destination. For instance, an empty stairwell or a hospital corridor at night might appear as sinister or uncanny because these places are usually brimming with life and movement. Therefore, the absence of external stimuli such as conversations, people moving around, or any kind of dynamism. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. Dynamism creates an otherworldly and forlorn atmosphere. Oh my god, this is so cool to see this put to words. While this definition is the closest to the usual academic meaning of liminality, it should be noted that liminal space aesthetics have recently expanded in scope to include images of places that are simply nostalgic, dreamlike, or uncanny, to the point where the only remaining common trait across these ramifications is the striking absence of people. That's extremely interesting to me. Because just a few months ago, I went out with a friend and we went to all these different locations, all these different malls specifically, that are going under. And really, malls all over the place are just dying now, thanks to online retail. And we just wanted to, basically, we took a GoPro and we walked around and we just wanted to document these places before they were gone and just see what they looked like. And one of the last places we went was a place called the Source Mall. If you're on Long Island, you probably know it. Apparently the place was never really successful, but now it's really just truly dead. And the lights are all on. It's not quite urbex because you are technically still allowed to walk around in here for like the one or two stores that are still around. But the lights are all on. There's still, there's actually no music playing. 
So there's kind of this weird disconnect where it's like it's open, but it's not. Like, only about half the lights are kept on, and there's no music playing. There will be maybe one store that you can see is open, maybe there's somebody standing at the register, but there's no customers in it. On one side of the building, there's a lower level where there's no stores open, and so the escalators aren't moving. And so it's this weird thing where, like, it's... It's almost like it's abandoned, but it's not. I want to read, I'm not going to read this whole article word for word, but I want to call attention to this paragraph right here. Liminal space aesthetics also have a significant overlap with those of after hours, since both explore the atmosphere of vacant spaces, which are easier to find during nighttime. But while the after hours aesthetic plays with feelings of peacefulness and a tranquil mindset, liminal spaces have a more unsettling appeal. So it does draw a distinction. So it's not entirely the same thing. There's a lot of overlap, but it is they are distinct from each other. The next paragraph is also something I was looking for. Liminal spaces are also quite subjective. What appears nostalgic to one person may be more unsettling to another, while some may find the same image bland with no emotions attached to it. There's even debate as to whether it should even be considered an aesthetic. Liminal space aesthetics consists of any room, corridor, or hallway that is big and empty. It carries an eerie and unsettling vibe with it. This part is key in separating the liminal space aesthetic from just a regular photo of an empty room or a corridor or hallway. Some edits of liminal spaces can give the effect of being in a retro horror or RPG game. Empty game servers and maps, mainly those presenting old-fashioned graphics like Gmod, No Players Online, Team Fortress, and early Call of Duty installments, have also been described as liminal. Despite this, however, possibly the best-known example of a liminal space is the back rooms, an entry into the pantheon of creepypasta that is described as what you see when you no-clip out of reality. Let's just give that a middle click, because I'm going to come back to that. And yeah, there's a whole bunch of examples down here. I'll probably save a bunch of these and have those cycling through as I narrate. I just took a quick look at the Backrooms wiki, and I quickly discovered that it's like a whole lore that I just don't even have the time to get into right now, although I definitely will later because it's pretty interesting. But, if you watched my Gaming Phobias video, you know that a project that I've been working on on and off for a while is actually a set of Backrooms of my own that unintentionally at the time, was actually an attempt to create this aesthetic. So I'm going to hop on ye old Minecraft server, and let's just go into the mall. Luckily I'm already right here. The mall itself actually does kind of feel like a liminal space because I don't like that I can hear a villager and I don't know where he is. But yeah, this building, we, we actually built this in like 2012, and we never really fleshed it out with a lot of stores. So a lot of the time, Minecraft does feel like a liminal space, I guess, if my understanding is correct. Uh, never mind the skeletons in the back. But let's just head on over to this unassuming door. Head on down. And I think I've got it right. I think I've done a pretty good job. There's a room in particular that I want to find. Of course, it is, by design, very difficult to navigate down here. Uh, is that the right entrance? No, I don't... You know what? Yeah, you can get in through here. Okay. So I think this incorporates the idea of liminal space correctly, right? Because it's like a weird little room that's sort of built into a hallway, and it's kind of dark and spooky. And also, it's in, like, this little nook where it doesn't look like it should even be there. I think I'm doing this right, am I? And then there's, like, this thing. I've always found, like, bodies of water tend to create this effect. It's like, I don't know if you've ever seen... I don't think it exists anymore, but I don't know if you've ever seen that weird street view of that house. The It's not called street view. It's, like, the virtual tour of that one house that was so illogical, and I guess I'll throw some footage of Twitch streamer that my sister likes. Uh, he, he did the virtual tour, and it's such a weird place because just when you think it ends, it just keeps going, and it's not it's such an illogical design for what was apparently just a house that was on the market. 
and it was such a weird space. And the the goal of that stream was you got to find the bathroom. You got to find the bathroom, or you got to find the pool, or whatever it was. And in the end, what they found was that it that section had actually been removed from the virtual tour because so many people were going on and looking for it because of how weird it was. But it, it ended up just being like a whole hallway. It, it was like a hallway that was a lowered pool in the ground. It was so weird. I don't know why I have like such a soft spot for making just like these tiny little bars in a nook. Like that to me is like creepy. It, it almost feels like the tiny compact out of the way version of the bar from The Shining. Because whenever, in that movie, whenever Jack goes into the bar, it feels like he's just entered his own little pocket dimension, even though it's a big space. But then again, I suppose The Shining could almost be considered liminal space as the movie, in a way. I mean, all it is is just them rounding corners in this huge empty space that should normally be full of people. So I'm still not like 100% sure that I fully understood the concept of a liminal space. But I present to you the question of whether this counts as one. So this is a work in progress on the server, and it's basically an attempt at a recreation of the rec center that I used to go to as a kid. And I've always found the lobby to be really, really creepy. This is actually how it looks. It's actually, it actually is this open. There's nothing in the middle, unless it's like a special event like Christmas or something. Normally there'd be stuff to the side here, but this is actually how they handle the transition between different areas. There's like, this in real life would be a ramp that goes up here, and that's how you get to like the conference room or whatever up there. This is how you get to the locker rooms for the pool. There's like this weird little nook in here that goes down a step, and then down here is where you get to, like there's like a little lunch area that goes out to the skating rink. And this is actually like, a pretty close approximation of what it looks like in real life, and I've always found this whole area, like, super creepy. And I'm not sure if this qualifies as a liminal space, so I'll leave that up to you guys. The pool is pretty creepy as well, because they had this whole thing where, from the conference area, I haven't actually lit this thing yet, from the conference area that has this huge fireplace in the middle, you can actually look down and see the pool. And I've always found this, like, super cool, but super weird construction. So I guess to close this off, I'll just come back to the gallery and try to take a look at some of these so I kind of get an idea for what they're going for here. Okay, so there's an empty school hallway. That's pretty straightforward. Now this. This is the kind of thing that I'm really interested in, and it's kind of low res, so I'll have to do the old Firefox zoom in. Areas of, like, water, like a shower or a bathtub or some kind of weird pool in a strange space where you can't even really determine what the purpose of this thing is. To me, I, I've always found that kind of thing really weird. Yeah, see, here's a weird one. Like, it's... It's just space of indeterminate purpose. Where at a glance it looks normal, but... Then you kind of start to think to yourself, like, what is this even for? Like, what is this space even used for? And, like, those foreboding open doors and blind corners... There's the back rooms. These things, these old... So you remember how McDonald's used to have these, like, play areas? I don't know if restaurants still do it, but they would have these things where there'd just be a room with, like, a huge maze and really just ant farm of these tunnels and slides and ladders and all that stuff that you could climb around in that would go all the way up to the ceiling. From the outside, they're kind of designed so that you can always kind of see where there's kids. But from the inside, they're so twisted and winding in these elaborate mazes of multicolored segments. And it's so, so weird. To the point where I would sometimes get startled by, like, rounding a corner and seeing another kid. Especially if I hadn't seen anyone else for, like, a while. I would need some more time to, like, think about why these things are so creepy so that I can articulate it better. But I definitely see what they mean by this image. Wait, that is... that is a screenshot from Wii Bowling. This one is interesting to me. 
Because to me, this would seem to fit more with what they called the After Hours aesthetic. See, 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 the weird thing to me, the thing that's unique about this is that it's an outdoor environment. So maybe somebody, somebody in the comments can kind of explain to me why one might consider this a liminal space. More playgrounds. Now see this. I think I'm picking up what they're putting down here. So it's all these rows of empty seats. But they're not filling the space with empty seats. There's a lot of open space. There's a lot of windows out there that are kind of reflecting the signs. Which, by the way, the lights are on. But not all the lights, so it's still kind of dark in here. And by reflecting the signs in the windows, it kind of makes the whole thing look like it just goes on forever. I, w I wonder if, like... I mean, they said, like, large, cavernous normally populated public spaces would count as a liminal space, but I wonder if the same can be said of something that kind of just looks like it goes on into infinity. I wonder if that's also a part of it. See this, I can get this because lights, again, lights are on, but you can see that it's nighttime. Nobody's here. I guess, so in my Source Games video, I talked about how the ambient sounds on RP Downtown V2 Kind of make it seem like the place is abandoned, but you can hear the activity. And I wonder if leaving the lights on in a public space, but nobody's around, and you can look for a pretty far distance and see that there's nobody around, I wonder if that creates this impression that, okay, I'm alone, but there's got to be somebody here, right? Because the lights are on. I'm in this space... And I feel like I'm sharing it with someone else, but I don't know who that person is or where they are. I wonder if that has something to do with it. Plus, there's that blind corner, which seems to be a recurring uh, theme in these. Yeah, empty space, escalators going every which way, giving the impression that this place is huge. This is just a creepy image, just a regular hallway in what looks to be like a hospital or a college or something. With the text, I was so afraid. The line between cringe and scary is often very subjective. Frosted glass. We can see that it's night. Or is it? Is it just a dark room on the other side? And there's a blind corner. And also that light is kind of in a weird spot. It's not exactly centered in that hallway. It kind of gives the impression that this whole construction was like an afterthought. See, with this, this is also something, the lights are partially on, and this is something that usually happens in a place that closes, but not completely, like in a place that runs 24-7. At night, they'll usually turn off, like, half the lights to save on power, because they know not many people are coming in here, and the people who are don't care. This one, to me, just seemed kind of moody at first. This kind of, you know, this looks like a school, it reminds me of... Going home, getting ready to get on the bus, leaving school at, on like a dark day where it's maybe going to rain later. I think there's something about... So there's a cone in the door there, right? And the door is being propped open. I feel like there's some element to this where it's almost like the space is inviting you to press on. But for that to be creepy, I would think to me it would have to be inviting you to move deeper into the space. This is an open door to what we can clearly see is outside. So, I'm a little conflicted on this one. Now this one is cool. This one I definitely get an eerie feeling from because there's that door right there, but it seems like... I'm getting the impression that that's not a door to outside, that that's just a room that's dark. Because it kind of seems like there's blinds down over the other side of this window, like an office or something. Although that could just be the wall being reflected in the glass. I'm not sure. There is a mirror right here. There's mirrors on each side of this column. But the main thing is that the lights are dimmed and there's a lot of blind corners. So you kind of almost... It's empty, but it's foreboding. And it kind of feels like you could expect somebody to jump out from around any corner. I'm actually kind of reminded of some of the earlier levels when you're in the train station and condemned. Now, this is kind of more what I 
originally thought of from liminal spaces. So this does seem to be like a hallway, like it seems like a transitional space because you can see that. Oh my god, oh my god, I just had a heart attack. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. So the 90s are very creepy to me. Because I'm from the 90s, I was there. So, you know, you got this ball pit, you got all these brightly colored toys and stuff, you got that carpet, which I had in my room. If you didn't have that, your parents didn't love you. I'm sorry you had to find out this way. But it's all, it's all in a hallway that seems to lead to another room. Like, there's a room, hallway room, and that hallway is just filled with stuff. That's not usually what you do with hallways. And it's all darkened. It looks like the camera's flash is actually lighting all of this right now. But the thing that got me just now... Tell me somebody's not peeking around the corner right there. Tell me that's not a person. I actually, what I saw at first was a Teletubby. Right there. I'm done looking at this. I'm done looking at that image. Oh my god. Ah. Uh, ah, uh, my spine is still vibrating. Okay, there's just a school hallway. Yeah, see, some, this is something that comes up a lot in these, is there's these weird angles that create strange corners. So you have an angled wall here. You have, it's not a flat wall in the back, it kind of goes in and out along the whole length of the wall. There's those two doors over there, it looks like there's a dark hallway in the corner there. Patterned carpets also seem to be a thing that comes up a lot. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. I see you. It seems like another part of this is large spaces that are empty, except for just a little teeny bit of it that looks to be in use. So this would be like a whole staff room, but you only sit over here and there's the coffee machine. Here's another one that's just illuminated by flash. And this kind of, to me, reminds me, again, of the idea that a liminal space invites you to progress deeper into it. So once again, we have a strange pattern on the carpet. We have something that sort of looks normal at a glance, but when you really think about it, it's like, what was even going on here with the way these chairs are placed? Like, they're stacked over there, but just knocked around over there. So that's kind of neat. Yeah, here's... So here's another example that's kind of unique. It's a bunch of chairs placed in a way that... Looks like a lot of them are really too close to be viewing whatever's on this screen. And they're kind of packed in such a way that, like, doesn't leave as much space as you would normally want. Like, there's no aisles. More, more angled walls leading to blind corners with doors off to the sides. Yeah, here's another one of those dark spaces where it's like, I don't even know what this is supposed to be. Like, what would this even be used for? This looks like office space that they're vacating. But, like, there's this weird, like, sort of two-thirds wall thing. A big part of this, to me, seems like it's odd construction choices that make it difficult to even determine what the space is supposed to be for. Ah, this. We're adding some multi-levelness to the mix. Angled walls leading up and out. Yeah, this is very, very creepy to me. Here's one that gives the impression that it just sprawls out forever. Like you could get lost in here and never find your way out. That's all the time I have for right now, but thank you for watching and thank you for bearing with me. This has definitely been interesting and it's something that I definitely want to look into a lot more. Because I've always been really interested in the creepy things that, like, really deeply get to you in a way that you probably wouldn't even be sure why it gets to you in the way that it does. And I think this really scratches this itch. But in the meantime, uh, again, thank you for watching, and I will see you in a later video. Right now, after how crazy last week was, I just want to play some video games. So, until then, see you next time.